feel like with my hair like this, I should be in a 90s girl band. Ginger Spice. Right, let's snug in, shall we? And have a little chat. <laughs> let's just roll my sleeves up because I mean business. I don't know why I try and be cool, to be honest. Doesn't work. We move and we groove. Hello everybody, welcome back to a new video. If you're new here, my name's Becca. Today I wanted to have a chat with you all about my sobriety journey. I hear you ask, why, Becca? You are a hip, cool young person. Why did you give up alcohol? There are so many reasons why I gave up alcohol. So for as long as I can remember, or as long as I have been drinking, which has obviously always been during the legal age to drink in the UK, which is 18. I've always had a pretty rocky experience with alcohol. I would black out, I wouldn't remember the night before. So when I went out to have a drink, I wouldn't know when to stop. And I know this is a pretty standard uh, storyline for people who say they've quit drinking and I think that's for good reason. I could never just go out for one drink. The narrative was always, yeah, I'll come out for one drink. Eight drinks later, I couldn't have one drink. It was impossible for me. And you might say, Becca, get some self-control, you can do it. Yes, I do believe that is also a valid point. If you feel you can actually go out and have one drink and be done, Perfect, excellent, you carry on, your self-control is much better than mine. I couldn't do it. I think one drink meant I lost all my inhibitions and I just kept drinking. Partly I do believe I was using alcohol as a crutch. If you don't know me, I have social anxiety and I am a very awkward person, generally. Stop it, I know, I know you can't tell. I think I used alcohol as a way for me to become somebody else. But that was the problem. When I'd had a drink, I was really confident. I could talk to everybody. I was the life of the party, or so I thought. So I'd meet people and they'd see this very confident, bubbly, excitable person who likes to have a good time. And then I'd meet them a few weeks later as this quiet, shy person who was almost unrecognizable to the person I was when I'd had a drink and I didn't like that. And it's taken me a little while to realize I actually prefer the person I am when I haven't had a drink. For a long time, my self-worth was tied up in how entertaining I was to people or how charismatic I was. And that led me to prefer the person I was when I'd had a drink. Now I've spent time working on that and working on my self-worth and my self-esteem and actually I much prefer the person I am when I have not had a drink. I didn't like who I was. I would make stupid decisions and then regret them in the morning. My hangovers were also terrible. If I knew that I was having a heavy night of drinking one day, I'd rule out the rest of the week. And the more this went on, the more I realized it was not good for me. And most people don't black out when they drink. Most people can stop and move on. During this time, I also went through a period of kind of reassessing my friendships and who I wanted in my life and who probably wasn't beneficial. And actually most of those people were the people I'd go out drinking with and drink a lot with. There were some friendships whereby we would only go out and drink and that was it. That that's all we did. And to me, that's not a real connection. That's just a mutual want to drown our sorrows, probably. It's very sad. <laughs> so my decision to quit drinking came after a series of events that were not okay. I was not myself. I would become a person I was not proud of. And one day I just decided, nope. I was by no means an alcoholic. I was not drinking every day. In fact, sometimes I'd go a month without drinking. But when I was drinking, I was binge drinking. I told myself that because I'd not drank for a month, it was okay to drink excessively on the days I was drinking. And that's not, that's not okay. <laughs> binge drinking can be just as detrimental to your health as drinking every day. Just because you're only doing it once a month or once every other week, it doesn't matter. And I was beginning to feel that and 
I stopped making excuses for myself. Although I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't say I was an alcoholic. I think I had a problem with binge drinking, which is different to alcoholism, which we can go into on another video if you'd like. I am by no means giving advice to people who potentially do have an alcohol problem. I would really advise you to get some help. There is so much brilliant help out there if you want to reach for it. It has to be your decision, but if you're feeling brave, I really recommend it and I can pop some numbers and websites down in the description for you in case you need them. I feel like I was in a fortunate position. I hadn't got to alcoholism just yet. I was binge drinking and it wasn't good for me. So I was able to quit cold turkey in a way that somebody who is suffering from alcohol abuse might not be able to do. If you do think you are, I recommend going to seek medical advice and not advice from a random person on the internet. So I quit. I quit completely. And do I miss it? What is sobriety actually like? I am an introvert. I don't have very many friends. The friends I do have, I adore, and they are very meaningful relationships to me. I'd rather have few, very, very, very close friends than loads of people who don't really know me or what I'm like. So I was very lucky when it came to sobriety. It was quite easy because Nobody pressured me to drink. There were a few instances where I felt guilty because I might be with one friend and they wanted to have a drink and felt they couldn't because I was there. Now I think I have been sober long enough where people do feel like they can have a drink around me. I really like it when people feel relaxed enough to be able to have a drink when I'm around because I like to think that is me not pressurizing this life decision on other people. I have been fortunate enough to have people around me who respect my decision and still love me as a person even without drinking. If you are a bit of a party animal and you go out every weekend, sobriety will look different for you if you choose to go down that path. I really recommend talking to your closest friends and saying this is something you think you want to pursue and if they are really supportive of you, I think that is very telling of somebody who is a good friend. If they try and pressurize you into having a drink, even after vocalizing your concern, I think you might want to reconsider who your close friends are. For me, sobriety has actually opened so many doors rather than closed them. When I first made this decision, I did think I was giving up some sort of social aspect of my life because I relied on it to kind of hold me and my social anxiety when I was out. Actually, I think now I talk to people much more openly. I'm much more myself when I do talk to people. I don't get tongue tied as much. I am still just as awkward, but I actually quite like that about myself. When I say it opened doors to me, I feel like I have got my days back. And I think I'm only just realizing that now. That's nice. As I said, my hangovers would last a week and I wouldn't be able to get out of bed. I'd feel sick and nauseous and it was a horrible feeling. I lost so much time to alcohol and I'm not prepared to do that anymore. Now, when somebody says, shall we go get a drink? I can offer to drive and I feel fully, fully okay with that. When somebody says, do you want to come and visit me? And they're four hours away. The drive then seems less painful because I'm not thinking the other end, I'm gonna be drinking and feeling rough the few days after when I meant to drive back. Yes, I used alcohol as a crutch, but it wasn't helping me. I think you get to a point when you know you need to get rid of the crutches. If you broke your leg and two years later you're still using crutches, how can you expect to walk properly? Yeah, you might need it at a time, but you don't always need it. And I think I needed to learn that when it came to alcohol. I see the world so clearly now and more clearly than I ever have done. I feel a little bit like I'm seeing the world through the eyes of a child. I can appreciate little things. Like I suddenly love looking at birds out the window. I think they're gorgeous. And I know some of my friends will appreciate that. <laughs> and another massive thing that I've noticed is finances. I like to spend my money on doing things now, such as going paddle boarding with my best friends or, you know, going and doing something, going to the cinema, going on holiday. I can comfortably say I'm happy to never spend excessive amounts on alcohol. And actually I have this little app that tells me how much I've probably saved and it's a lot of money. There are so many positives and I can honestly say I will never go back. But are there any downsides? Hmm. Of course there are downsides to everything. Yeah, I don't feel as able to go and meet up with a large group of people. But then, do I really want to? 
When it comes to the negatives of sobriety, I always ask myself, do I really want to, or is it a social expectation? Most of the time, it's a social expectation. Well, the negatives of sobriety are usually what we're expected to do. It's very hard to come up with the negatives, I think. But then again, that is coming from somebody who doesn't consider herself to have ever been an alcoholic. I'm sure it's very different for those of you who might feel that way. I think if I had to come up with one negative, it is explaining it to people. But I can tell you, it does get easier. At the start of my sobriety journey, I would always use driving as an excuse. Now, I just say I don't drink. Sobriety has opened my eyes and I'm so grateful I came to this decision. I think for a lot of us, it's a social norm that we have to break and it can be a bit of a weird situation for some of us, especially if you're younger or at university or even younger than that. I won't tell anyone you're drinking, don't worry. We have the power to break social norms and I like to think of myself as being a bit of a rebel when it comes to the social anxiety world because I don't use alcohol as a crutch. If you're struggling with anything to do with alcohol, please do comment down below. I'm sure plenty of people will have advice for you. For me personally, the world is too beautiful and there are too many opportunities that I don't want to miss because of a hangover. Again, please seek medical help if you need it and do feel free to comment down below. We have a lovely community. Subscribe and like this video for more. And again, look after yourselves and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for putting up with my social awkwardness.